right. I hope you all feel energetic this morning, even though it's the end of the week. Yes? All right. By faith. If you don't feel it, faith is not a feeling. I want to uh, say to you, happy Friday. All right. Here we go. As it was already mentioned this morning, I want to share with you um, about prayer. And here's the thing. I'm not, I, I, I promise you, I'm not sharing this from a person who's saying, like, look, I'm an expert on this. If there was anything in my life that was, or in my spiritual walk that was difficult for me to, to, to develop and to learn, I believe it was how to pray. And the reason being is because I was the type of person, I was like, you know what, if I can't see God, how can I talk to God if I can't see him? And so that was very hard for me. It was hard for me to do. And so I'm going to share some things with you um, that was very helpful for me. And here's the thing. We come to a week of prayer, and sometimes we will come to the week of prayer, and the last thing we do is what? last thing we do is pray. And so it's important if we have a week of prayer that we know how to actually commune with God. We're not here to hear a speaker. We're here to hear from, from God. And how do we commune with him? We have to talk back with him and have him talk to us. So I think this topic is very, very important this morning. But uh, before we get into it, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. I'm going to kneel. You can just bow your heads if you like. Our Father in heaven, Lord, I want to thank you for Jesus. And Lord, you've told us that um, through Christ, we have all the gifts of heaven. All the heavenly gifts have been given to us through him. And that includes this privilege of prayer. And Lord, I want to ask that in my own small simple feebleness, and Lord, I just pray that you use me to relate things that have been a blessing to me, and that it would develop the prayer life of my brothers and sisters here. Lord, I thank you for this grace, and we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I don't know what year it was, but <clears throat> HMS Richards uh, told a story how that in, um, when he was a little boy, he went to Colorado uh, he was going to these meetings, there were people from the community, there was people from the church, and everyone was really excited. I think at, at his time, he said there was a, probably around 200 people, and they were here to hear a little old woman, uh, Ellen G. White. Some of the people in the community, they wanted to hear this prophetess that, that the Seventh-day Adventist church have. And this was going to be his time, his, I believe his first time actually seeing Ellen White. And he, he describes how he, she was standing on a platform and he was over to the left side of her, I believe, or one of the sides, I guess. I don't know if it was his left or her left. I can't remember. Um, but he said he was about 15 feet away from her when he was listening to her preach. And as she started preaching, she was preaching in a normal voice, a normal talking voice. But then it started to rain. And as it started to rain, the rain, of course, would get louder. And then Ellen White, this little woman, goes into her preaching voice. And he said she was as clear as a bell. Strong voice, she starts to preach, and he was just, he was amazed. Suddenly after that, she starts to pray, and I believe she looks over and son says, we need to pray. So Ellen White starts to pray, and as she starts to pray, he said, I remember clearly, she said, she didn't say our father, she says my father. And she starts to get really personal with God, and as she's praying, he said, he describes, he said, he remembered people in the meeting started weeping. As this lady is like having this personal communion with God, people was like weeping over their sins. And he says, I will never forget that. You know, when I thought about that, I remember hearing that story. I was like, how do you come to the point where you really commune with God like that? How do you have that communion? You know, the disciples, they told that they, they heard Jesus praying once. They said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Because whatever they heard from Jesus, they were like, how did Jesus? Jesus was just communing with his father, and it made an impression on them. Prayer is one of the most powerful things that we can have in our Christian walk. It's one of those things that if we learn to develop it, it keeps us in close connection with God. But my question has always been, like, how do I have that? So I want to share with you this morning some things that God has been teaching me, how prayer became more real in my life. And we're going to go through some principles here. When I looked at prayer, the first thing God had to share with me, the first thing God had to get in my mind is that I had to have a different mindset when it came to prayer. I had to understand that God was actually my father. 
I had to understand that God was actually my father. I've heard people say it, God, my father, you know, pray father in heaven, talk to him like your father. But I had to really believe that. And what God was trying to do in me is get me to a mindset that I'm communicating with him as a father. You know, the Bible says this. It says, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more should your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? There's a, there's a passage in the book of James, uh, I believe it's chapter 1, where God says um, every good gift and every perfect gift come from God. The thing we have to understand when we're coming to God, first of all, is the fact that God is our Father, and because He's our Father, He really wants us to have good gifts. He really wants us to have good gifts. And I remember this really think, changing my mind. I remember one time having a toothache, and mind you, I just had, I had a tough time praying to God. I was just, you know, not that it was, it was so much tough in believing that God wanted me to be blessed, but... You know, I really had to get to the point like, God, are you really, really my father? So I had this toothache, and it was a Friday night, and I didn't, I was looking, I was trying to find something, I didn't have any sort of pain medication for my toothache. I was like, God, what do I do? It was kind of late at night, I didn't want to wake anyone up. And so I said, you know, and I've had toothaches before. Um, when I was a kid, I didn't, take, I didn't take the best care of my teeth. <laughs> I love candy, right? But, um, but I was like, okay, Lord, so... I was like, if God is my father, why don't I pray to him? And I have to believe that he's my father. He doesn't want me in pain. So I went in prayer, and, I, and, and the first time I started praying, I remember I was praying to God, and believe it or not, my toothache it started to subside a little, but it didn't totally go away after I finished praying. And I was just thinking, I was like, wow, that kind of helped a little bit. And I was like, well, Lord, you know, if that helped, I still feel it, and I, I prayed again. I prayed four times, and after the fourth time, my toothache went completely away. Now, God didn't have to do that, but when I started thinking about it, I was like, look, if my real father, my earthly father, he, didn't, he wouldn't want my, my tooth to be in pain. And so I actually presented that to God. I was like, Lord, you're my heavenly father. I know my earthly father would try to do everything possible to keep me from having this pain. You love me more than he does. And so I prayed with that mindset. And in that case, God actually blessed where my tooth didn't hurt. But we're going to talk about when God doesn't sometimes bless the way you want to as well. But I had to have that approach. I had to know that this is my Heavenly Father. And, you know, some of us, we, we may not have the best experience with our, our earthly fathers. So when we hear God is our Heavenly Father, we don't really understand what the Bible is trying to relate to us. But, you know, the Bible it goes through and shows what that Heavenly Father looks like. You know, most of us have someone in our lives that we know, you know what, that person cares. And God is trying to relate to us. The reason why I'm approaching you as, my, as your Heavenly Father is because I want you to know I care. That's like the first thing you have to have in your mind when you come before God. He really, really does care. The second thing I learned was to recognize God's holiness. And I say, well, why is this so important? What I realized as I look in the scriptures is that oftentimes when people recognize their holy, God's holiness, they recognize his power, they recognize their humility before him. And that is so needed when coming before God. If you come before God and you're like, hey, you know, God is just as common as, common as I am, God is just on the same level as I am, then why do I need to go to God and ask for him for anything? But when I recognize that God is holy, when I recognize that God is powerful, I recognize that I'm coming before someone who has the power to deal with things that are bigger than me. And I'm so thankful God has the power to deal with things that are bigger than me. God is holy. I have to recognize that. Now, this was a big one for me. Pray meaningfully. Now, of course, you, you, some of you probably recognize um, what those little glasses are. I've been to a number of churches, and they have those little glasses. And people go, and, or they, they're like candles. And in some places, these are like candles for the dead. These are candles where they're praying to saints. Uh, in some churches, um, um, Catholicism, some of those various churches. So they're praying to saints, and, and a lot of times they have certain prayers they would pray. And, um, and so most of us would say, well, we don't pray like that. We don't pray before candles. We don't pray um, in a way that's, um, 
you know, repetition. We're not praying to saints. We're not saying these little prayers and go on and on and on. But be honest with you, when I really start to think about this, sometimes we can actually pray in a similar way. Now, let me give you an idea of that. This is what Jesus said. He says, but when you pray, use not, by the way, Jesus was, was talking to Jews here. He says, use not vain repetitions as, do, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard from, uh, for their much speaking. But be ye not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Now, there's a lot of, we can, there's some other things we can plug out here, but I want to show you how I start to realize this in my life. I realized that I used to have some vain repetition prayers. For example, when I go to bed, Lord, keep me tonight, protect me as I sleep, amen. The next night, Lord, keep me tonight, protect me as I sleep, amen. I knew I wanted to pray because I was taught, you know, pray before you go to bed. But when I prayed, I always said the same thing. <clears throat> when I would eat, Lord, bless this food I'm about to receive for the nourishment of my body, amen. You know, of course, say Jesus' name, Amen. Next meal, Lord, bless this food I'm about to receive, nourishment of my body. Amen. Vain repetition. When I pray for other people, I used to pray like this. Someone give me a whole list of names. Uh, be with so-and-so, and be with so-and-so, and be with so-and-so, and be with so-and-so, and you get the point. It was kind of meaningless. Why was I asking God to be with so-and-so? Why was I wanting to thank God for the food that was before me? Why was I needing God to protect me? Or even in the car, why was I needing God to protect me? And God started really getting to my mind. What are you asking me for? Which brings us to our next point. Identify what you need. So I started to change the way I prayed. <clears throat> I started to think like, man, you know, God's blessed me with this food. Hey, if it's something I like, Lord, thank you. You blessed me with one of my favorite meals today. I really enjoy this. <laughs> Lord, may this food really, really nourish my body. You know I'm getting ready to go to work today. Um, Lord, allow me to get what I need from this food. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? You, you make it very practical. Instead of just saying, Lord, be with so-and-so, be with so-and-so, be with so-and-so. Why did that person ask me to pray? And I actually think about it before I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for that person. Lord, so-and-so is getting ready to go through this and that, and they have a test. Lord, please give them skill and wisdom. You gave it to Daniel, give them skill and wisdom. You see what I mean? Make it meaningful. God wants to communicate with us. He just, be with so-and-so, be with so-and-so. Um, yeah, make it meaningful. Identify your need. <clears throat> Here's some text that talks about identifying the need, um, but we're going to look at one of them. This is, um, if you look at all these different stories, you want to take that down really quick. All these stories dealing with individuals who recognized that when they came to pray, they, they needed something. And I believe that the reason why a lot of times we, we don't pray more earnestly because we don't recognize we need it. Why don't we pray more earnestly for the Holy Spirit? Because we don't recognize we need it. But let me tell you something. When you start working for the Lord, when you start seeing your failures when you're trying to overcome that temptation, when you start recognizing that, man, I'm studying something and I just don't get it. I remember uh, not long ago I was doing a class. I'm, I'm doing a Daniel class that I'm putting up for, um, for some videos. And I come across this problem as I was reading through the book of Daniel. And I was like, and I, it was something I was sharing with uh, Brother, Brother Jensen earlier this week. But as I was coming across this problem, I was like, I do not get this. I don't get it at all. Like, it just seems like this is a problem. I don't get it. And I tried. I tried to use all my human wisdom. And then I came to the point, I literally had to pray. And I simply prayed. I was like, Lord, I'm not smart enough to get this stuff. Lord, even Daniel, and we all know Daniel was smart. I was like, Lord, Daniel was like 10 times wiser then all the wise men of Egypt, and these were like, or sorry, Babylon, and these were like the wisest men in the world, and he struggled. He got sick trying to understand this, and you gave him skill. If Daniel couldn't get it, how am I going to get it? You have to help me. You know what happened? That morning, 
after I prayed, Lord, just like, you know what? You need to look at this verse over here. Look at this. And I was like, wow. And God started to give me answers. God started to give me answers. But I had to recognize my need. I had to recognize, like, I have a real need here. And if we really recognize we needed the Holy Spirit when we study the Bible, not just, you know, we need the Holy Spirit, but just realize, like, I need to hold the Holy Spirit for my Bible study. I need the Holy Spirit to touch hearts. I need the Holy Spirit for this. Then we'll be praying for him more. Because we need him. We need him. The Bible says in James chapter 1, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And it says, But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The word is there, lacking nothing. So God is saying the trials are there to help us realize where we're lacking. But then notice, if you just stop at, Lord, oh, I see my need now. It's not enough. It's not enough. Notice what verse 5 says. It says, if any of you, what? Lack wisdom. If you recognize now I'm lacking wisdom here, the Bible says, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. He wants to give it, and it shall be given him. So it's not enough to say, Lord, I need you. But you have to, God says, okay, now ask. But you need to ask because I need it. I need it. Lord, help me to see how desperately I need this. That, and it would inspire our prayers. The next thing I want to share is I had to understand is uh, learn God's revealed will. Um, just simply, you know, it doesn't make sense to, to pray for something and you're actually praying totally against what God is desiring. And one of the easiest ways to find God's revealed will is in the word of God. I've heard many people pray for things. I remember Bible working in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I was studying with the man and he started saying, you know what, can you please pray for me? that I can win the lottery. I couldn't pray for that. Actually, I was praying in my mind uh, that he, he wanted to go buy a lottery ticket. He says, well, if the store is open by the end of this Bible study, then I'll, go, um, then I'll go pay for a lottery ticket with some money he had. And he wasn't really, um, he, he struggled for, for means. I was actually praying, I was like, Lord, I pray this study goes over today. And he didn't go buy that lottery kit ticket. He's like, well, I guess it's not God's will for me to go buy this lottery ticket because uh, the, the study went a little bit longer. Um, we have to pray according to God's will. And the way we find God's will is with the scriptures. God speaks to us. We speak back to him. It's very important. Of course, this is the Bible, uh, Bible promise of, of that. It says, and this is the confidence that we have of him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, hear us, whatsoever we ask, we, have the, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. And this was Jesus' prayer. Jesus says he delight to do the will of his Father. And this was one that was very important for me. Just open up. Open up to God. Ellen White has a quote. She says, prayer is the opening of the heart, of, uh, the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what, what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring us down to God, but brings us up to him. Steps to Christ. Open up. Open up to God. Whatever it is, like, talk to God as your friend. And let me tell you something. I talk to God. I tried to learn to talk to God about everything. And I can remember uh, some years ago, um, I don't know how it happened. I, I know I was visiting a lot of people. I didn't know if it came from that. I did visit some friends. They had, um, their dog had fleas. And somehow I tracked those into my house. <clears throat> and so instead of it getting better, it got worse. And I did a few things. My, my family used to own a pest control business. And so I was like, okay, maybe I'll try this and try that. Nothing was working. It just got worse, got worse, got worse. It got to the point where I couldn't sleep at night. And I was like, what is this? You know, I just, I just didn't like it. And then I wake up at night, and, uh, you know, if I thought I felt something, I just I had a flashlight next to my bed, and I was like, ah, you know. And I just wake up, and I just, I just couldn't stand this. Well, that week, I had a really, really busy week. I was doing a series of worships. Um, and so I was like, Lord, I'm not getting rest. And so finally I decided, why don't I talk to God about this? Why don't I talk to God? And so I did. And I was literally in my prayer, I was like, Lord, you know that this is, I'm not getting the rest that I need. You know, I have a series of worships this week, and I'm not thinking, because I'm constantly thinking at night that this thing is bothering me. These things are bothering me. 
And um, actually, I, before, I, I, was, I was having my devotions, and I, and I saw one of them, and I was praying that pr- I prayed that prayer after seeing it. And then uh, I had about an hour left before I was going to go to bed. I was still reading. And I noticed, because it was really bad, it was like every so many minutes I would see one. <clears throat> um, or maybe not that close, but it was, it was pretty bad. An hour goes by, and I was like, I don't see anything. Hmm. I go to sleep. Didn't feel anything. Wake up the next day, I didn't see anything. Go a whole day, saw nothing. I go the rest of the week, and I'm like, I saw absolutely nothing. There was no fleas. I had tried everything, but with, after praying and just talking to God and opening my heart, it's like God took them away, and I never saw them again. They never came back. God was concerned. I just opened up to him about it. It wasn't something that was like, well, Lord, you know, this is a little thing. I'm sure you don't want to deal with that. It was like, no, I'm going to open. This is, I want God in my life. I want God to, to see this, even the things I think is small, that I think I can fix myself. I want to talk to God about it. I want to talk to God about it. And then there's the idea of keep, to keep asking. Of course, there's a, there's a few parables there. Uh, the Bible says, um, and he spake a parable unto them, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards said, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. And you know the end of the story. So he would avenge, her speedily, or avenge them speedily. And he says, nevertheless, shall, uh, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. This woman actually persevered in her prayer. And Ellen White had this to say about perseverance. She says, I asked the angel why there was no more faith and power in Israel. And this was the angel's answer. Ye let go of the arm of the Lord too soon. Press your petitions to the throne and hold on by strong faith. The promises are sure. Believe ye receive the things ye ask for and ye shall have them. Christ's object lessons actually tells us that God does not say ask once and ye shall receive. He bids us ask unwearingly persistent in prayer. The persistent asking brings the petitioner into a more earnest attitude and gives him an increased desire to receive the things for which he asks. Now, I always ask this question like, God, if you really want to bless me, like, why don't you just answer me right away? When, when God waits, if I could use that word, and we keep petitioning God, what happens is our desire for that thing grows, and when we receive it, we recognize, guess what? We value the blessing more. It seemed like it was harder for us to get it, but once we get it, we value it. Can't just kind of understand what this means? Not in the same sense, but if you can think about it, will a person value a book more if you gave it to them or if they had to do something, put something out to get it, like some, a donation? You know, if they give a donation, they, they would generally value it more. It's, it may seem harder to get versus someone giving them a book, but they value it more once they get it. It's kind of the same principle. It seems like it's hard, like, man, I really pressed and prayed, and God gave me this blessing, but we value it. We value it. In the end of the day, trust God's judgment. Trust God's judgment. If God doesn't give you the blessing that you think you should have, if he's a wise father, he knows what's best. He knows what's best. And then this is one that I always have to remember. Review the blessings. Now, why review the blessings? Here's why. <clears throat> Number one, you have to remember that God has a heart and he has a heart of love. God shows the blessing to us because he wants to reveal his love, but we don't have anything to give back to God except for our gratitude. We can give back to God our gratitude. There's a relationship going on here. We're showing God, Lord, we love you. But there's another reason. When we review the blessings, when we come to that next test when we need to pray, by reviewing the blessings, it increased our faith for the next one. Review the blessings. And so often, God would do things for us, and guess what we do? We forget. 
We'll forget the next day. Israel did this all the time. Oh, man, they would sing a new song. And then the next test comes, they forgot to review the blessing. Review the blessing. In Messiah's mansion, we have pet goats. And um, I've actually come to love goats. Um, at first, I thought they were a little bit annoying because uh, they like to chew and you know, do different things. They like to get into things. But um, I've, I've actually grown, grown fond of our goats. And that's, uh, these are some of our goats that are feeding. And they love to eat our scraps. And, um, but yeah, something I no- noticed about our goats is that our goats... Um, they generally, when I first used to go out there, they would run away from me all the time. And they didn't want to be around. They would, they would just, you know, any little movement, they would, they would take off. You know? And we have fainting goats, so if you move too fast, and their back legs will freeze, and then just, boom, they'll fall over. <laughs> um, so at first, that was kind of fun to watch. And I was like, oh, I feel sorry for them, so I didn't want to do that so much. <laughs> but the goats, it was interesting that I would like to, sometimes we would throw the, the, the food out like you see here, but sometimes I would personally, I like to feed it right out of my hand because I wanted to get close to the goats. I was like, man, I want to pet them one day. Um, but they never, they thought I ran away from me like I wanted to, to kill them or something. But I wanted to pet them, so I would feed them out of my hand, feed them out of my hand. And the way, the, it's interesting because most of the goats, when I feed them out of my hand, they want the food so badly, but they were thinking like, you know, is this guy going to harm me? You know, is he going to use me for a demonstration at Messiah's Mansion? No. But, um, but anyway, they would, they would stretch out their necks, and they would stretch out their necks, and they would kind of snatch the food and then run off. That's how they would do it. They would stretch out, snatch the food, and run off. But there was one goat. If you notice the goat that's, that's right next to her left hand, that goat was a very young goat, and that goat began to do something differently. We, we actually called, well, I call her, her name is Greedy for right now. Um, I haven't thought, thought of a better name, but Greedy is the only name I, I've, I've given her. And the reason why is because, first of all, she's not picky. Like some of the goats, they were like, oh, boy, you know, I like that, but I don't like the tomatoes. I like, the, some goats can be, believe it or not, goats can be picky. Um, but she's not picky. She's just, whatever you give her, if all the other goats turn away, she's like, here am I. And she'll eat it. <laughs> and, um, but she's not picky. But the other thing you'll learn about Greedy is that Greedy is actually, if you could say there was a totem pole of, of who eats first, she's actually at the bottom. Uh, she's one of the ones at the bottom. The one standing next to her is kind of at the bottom, too. And I don't know how they, they come up with this pecking order, but one of the things I know is about the goats is that it's like one eats first and then the other if there's something really good out there. And so if I threw the vegetables on the ground uh, and she's over there eating, one of the other goats will come and they either head butter and she has to run off. You know, she's, she's generally at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to eating. But Greedy has found a way to get more food than all the other goats. Because remember, when I feed them from my hand, even the strongest of the goats, they're just kind of like, pick, and then they run away. That's how they want to do They're getting more used to me now. But that wasn't Greedy. Greedy actually did something different. This is what she would do. That's her jumping up on me. She recognizes that he has the good stuff, and as long as I get as close as I can to him, I'll even hop up and I'll draw to him. While the other ones are running away, I'll get all the food. She draws close. This is actually her (laughs) getting fed. And all the ghosts like grapes. And so grapes is like the favorite meal, and so I would feed her grapes, and the ghosts were kind of watching her eat all these grapes, but the way she was doing it, she was coming up while they were running off. So all the goats were saying, wait a minute, if that's the way we get the blessing, <laughs> let us come. And so they came and started running up. <clears throat> but everything else, they would just pick and run off, but not greedy. She gets the blessing because she comes as close as she can, and she hops up on me. And you can't resist. Look at those eyes. You can't resist that. <clears throat> you know, when I thought about her one day as I was feeding her, I was thinking, Lord, teach me to pray like she presses to me. Teach me to pray like that. So often we get the blessings of God, it's like we kind of pick it. It's like, Lord, I want the blessing. Oh, thank you, and I'm going to go do my own thing. But you and I, we have to have a heart that, Lord, I want the blessing, and I'm going to press you for it. I'm going to draw close to you for it. I'm even going to rise higher to get it. Because prayer does not bring God down to us. It brings us up to him. 
And the more we get close to him, the more we can benefit just from the blessing of being with Jesus. And that's why I want to encourage you today. You know, you may seem like, wow, you know, I don't really have a strong prayer life. If there's anything you learn, press to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Just how you know, what, however you, you know how, the best you know how, come to Jesus. He will teach you how to commune with him. And you will not regret it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for the examples you give us in your nature. I thank you for the illustrations you've given in, the, in your word. But most importantly, I thank you that you want to commune with us. You want us to commune with you. And Lord, as the disciples prayed, teach us how to pray. Teach us that when we come into your presence, you can be real in our lives. And help us to experience loving you through that communion. Thank you for hearing us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so pleased you could join us here for this special event at Watchtower Hills Academy and College. And if you have enjoyed this presentation as much as I have, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you would like to support the making of these programs, you can find the donation information on the link below. Thank you so much for joining us, and may God richly bless you.